I'm Charlie, I'm with WaterOutfitters.com. I'm gonna to talk to you today about slalom skiing and what you should know before you go out and make an educated purchase on a new slalom ski. Uh, today, there's a couple different types or shapes of water skis for slalom. There's a wide ski, traditional, and then now we're even getting into shape skis similar to snow skis. A wider ski is normally gonna be used for a slower speed. If you're just a wreck skier, somebody who's skiing at 28, 30, 32 mile an hour, you're gonna want a little wider ski gives you a little bit more flotation, it gives you a little bit more pop out of the water, and it's just going to let you ski at the optimal speed um, with, without sinking the tail or going over in the nose. And then there's the traditional ski, which is going to be a little bit narrower. It's going to be for a little faster ski, uh, it's somewhere in the range of 32, 34, 36 mile an hour. And then you're getting into the newer skis, which are shaped skis, where they'll have a little bit of parabolic shape into it. It's just like a snow ski. It helps you initiate the turns. It helps you get around the buoys if you're skiing in a course. Uh, it just gives you a lot of added benefits and it'll keep you going a little bit easier and help you progress a little bit. As far as sizing goes, there's two things that you kind of want to take into account when you're sizing a ski. You want to count how much you weigh, how tall you are, and then when you're picking a ski too, just what speed you're looking at. So as far as weight goes, someone that's about 150 or less, you're looking at a 66 or a 67 inch ski. Uh, the ski manufacturers all come with different sizes, so you'll get some range of them. Some of them even get down to a tenth of it, so you'll get a 66.2 maybe. But if you're under 150 pounds, you want to stay under a 67 inch ski. The next range ski you're going to look at is about 150 to a 200 pound person. Uh, that's going to be a 68 inch ski, or in that realm of that, so you can get a high 67 or a low 68 and that's going to be within that same range and then you're also going to be looking at people who are 200 plus you're going to be on a 69 inch ski uh, the bigger the ski really it's just more weight distribution it keeps you at the optimal ride heights for the ski and it just makes it so everybody's on an equal playing field ski construction nowadays there's going to be a couple different types of ski construction for slalom skis they're mostly going to be made out of fiberglass, graphite, or carbon fiber. They're all going to be a little bit lighter weight than your traditional roto mold combo ski, but what you're looking at is going to be carbon fiber is going to be on the high end. It's a really stiff ski. It's also really light, so it helps you whip around the corners a little bit easier, and you just have less weight in the water. Fiberglass is going to be on the lower end. It's still going to be a nice light ski over your roto mold ski, but it's just a little bit heavier than the carbon fiber. And then right in the middle is going to be graphite. It's going to be the medium stiffness and it's going to be a medium weight. Um, it just depends on how much you're skiing, how much you want to get into it before you decide what you want to get. So when you're looking at buying a slalom ski, there's a couple features that you're going to want to look at. One of the things you're going to want to look at is going to be the tunnel of the ski. What this is, it's going to be the shape under the ski. And what that is, is it's an area where it traps water and it keeps a little bit of air in there and that's what keeps you afloat on top of the water. A deeper tunnel is going to give you a little bit more ride height and a shallower tunnel is going to let you sink in a little bit more but it gives you a little bit more control over the ski. A new thing that they're also doing with skis is they're putting V shapes inside the hull and it's just going to be a bunch of little V's that you're going to see somewhere in the range of this area of the ski itself and what that does is it channels water out of the hull and it gives you a little bit more bubble to sit on top of so that you're sitting more over the top of the ski and you're not sinking into the water quite as much. Um, another thing that you're gonna wanna look at is the bevel of the ski. So along the edges of the ski, there's gonna be a bevel that meets the tunnel to the actual edge of the ski. A sharper bevel or a sharper edge is gonna let the ski edge harder into the water. It's gonna be a little bit more responsive. So if you roll the ski onto its edge, it's gonna bite a lot quicker and it's gonna turn around a buoy. Uh, it'll be a lot more snappy. And then a softer bevel is gonna be for somebody that's a little bit more of an intermediate or for somebody who normally skis way out in front of the buoy. And what that is, is it's just gonna give you a slower roll in time so that you'll roll the ski on and then before the bevel actually catches, and then you'll catch and it'll go. So you'll just look at the sharpness necessarily of the bevel on the edge of the ski. And then with most slalom skis you'll see, They'll have fins on the bottom. It's normally going to be an aluminum construction. Um, you'll also see that they'll have brakes on them. It'll just look like little wings. It's always on the bottom of the ski. 
Uh, what the brake does is that if you're coming in too hot or you're coming around a buoy and you're too far ahead of the boat, you normally just lean a little bit forward onto the ski and the brake catches you, it'll slow you down real quick, lets the boat catch back up with you and then you can cut around the buoy. Um, if you're an intermediate person or you're somebody that's just getting into slalom skiing, I normally recommend that you take the brake off until you get accustomed to the new ski. A lot of times what happens is people get a little timid, they'll lean over the top of the ski, they'll break too much, and that's when they'll end up going over the tip of their ski. Um, with most slalom skis, you'll either see two setups. It's either going to be a double boot, where it's got two boots that your feet go into, or it's going to have a boot and a rear toe plate. What generally ends up happening is people that are beginner, intermediates, um, or some people that just like a little looser feel, they'll ski a single boot with a rear toe plate, and what that does is you can either start with one foot out and it lets you keep your balance with your foot out of the water before you get up into the actual ski position, put your foot back into the toe plate, and then you're ready to ski on. Or there's people that'll do a double boot. The double boot, the benefit of that is it's gonna give you the best responsive or the best control over the ski because you're dialed into the ski. It keeps you really snug into it and it just lets you roll the ski any which way you want and really initiate turns a lot easier. Now there's a couple different types of boots that you're looking at. There's a general wrap, which it's just a plastic, or it's a pla or some sort of plastic neoprene foam that goes around that you slip your boot into, you slip your foot into, and it holds you really well. Then there's boots that also have lace-ups that you can tie, or some sort of quick tie that lets you do uh, snug up the boot real nice to you. And then there's new custom fit ones, which are actually heat molded to your foot. Uh, they give you the best of both worlds. It it's the most comfortable, it's the best rebound on, and then it also keeps you really tight into the boot, which just adds to the responsiveness of the ski. And uh, that's probably about all you need to know about slalom skiing with wateroutfitters.com. Hope you enjoyed it.